Hi everyone. Some of you may have seen my recent Instagram post on Apple's new store at the Marina Bay Sands, Singapore. It was gaining attention since it was the first floating Apple store in the world. So I decided to have some fun and make an animation of the store bobbing up and down and creating some ripples in the waters. In this video, I will go through my process of creating the ripple wave animation. So here we are in Cinema 4D and I've stripped away the entire scene except for the Apple building which is just uh, shown as a sphere over here and I also have my water surface and this water surface actually has a few displacer to add the details and the main animation is actually driven by a displacer and a jigger deformer so there is no simulation involved it's all down to just using deformers in Cinema 4D okay, so as we play over here as you can see the waves are actually driven by uh, two splines, circle splines, as you can see over here, circle one and circle two. And as the building reaches the bottom, then I will just animate the circle spline outwards. And this is the one that will drive the displacer to create the wave. And then we also have the jiggle deformer to just add the bouncy animation. Okay, so let's see how we can set this up. I remove one of the circle. I will just I will just switch off this two wave details displacer because all they are doing basically is just adding some noise as you can see over here, adding noise to add some details into the onto the water surface to make it look like there are some um, mini waves. So we don't need that for this for now. So just delete that. And the water surface is actually just a simple plane with about sixty uh, divisions in the width and 80 in the height. I've actually turned on a subdivision surface to make it more smooth but for now let's turn it off. Okay, so we're just left with this um, plane as you can see over here and let's just uh, delete all this. So we will start again from scratch. Okay, let's turn off the wireframe first. Okay so the first thing we want to do is just to animate the building and so all I have over here is just this uh, building which is going up and down in the y-axis as you can see over here so all I've done is just animated the bobbing up and down okay, and then I've just repeated the curve so that you know I just have to animate it once and then it will just go on and on forever okay, and then for the circle okay, this is a manual animation actually is that there's no uh, it's not automatic okay what I have done okay let me just turn off this water first it's just a simple circle spline so and all I have done is just animated the radius so that the point where the building bounces off the ground it actually just scales the radius of the circle up as you can see over here so it is basically just animating the radius like I say from zero until whatever point and then after that it will loop again so how to loop is uh, you just select the last keyframe over here and then we go to the uh, where is it uh, functions and then track after and repeat after so what when we select this what happened is that cinema 4d will at the end of the last keyframe it will cycle back and repeat the whole animation again and that's where we get this endless animation so actually our and our these two animation the building bouncing and the circle uh, spending it will just go on forever and ever you can see over here so there's not many keyframes if you were to see the dope sheet I only have a few keyframes over here yeah, so we're just using the functions to repeat the animation okay so that's all for the animation basically that's this uh, just just two things that we're going to animate is just the building bouncing and the circle animating Okay, so the circle animating is the one that will drive the displacer later. Okay, so now we're going to add the displacer onto the water. We'll just select the water surface here. So I'll just add the displacer here now. Okay, and then the displacer will put it under the water. Okay. We'll just leave it at a height for 10 cm for now. And then for the shading, we're just going to add a simple solid white color. This is just 
to give the displacer something to reference so that it can do its displacement which is just a simple white color which means it's 100 percent evenly uh, applied to the entire surface most of the things that we're going to do will come under the fall off which is under the fields options okay and the first thing we want to do we're going to use the circle we're going to bring in the circle because this circle is the one that we're going to use to drive the displacer see had some displacement going on as you can see over here okay. so you'll be wondering i was why is it like this why is it so weird i thought we want to have a circle okay, because by default when we bring in a circle which comes in as a spline fill layer you can also find it over here under this solid if we click open we'll see that this spline object basically is the same one you, as you can tell by the icon so it's linked already when we drag it in and default is that it takes the distance mode as along the curve which means let's turn off the water so we have this circle over here it actually takes the zero from somewhere wherever the starting point is and you will go along until the end and you it will go to 100 over here so it'll be at 0 10 20 30 40 50 and 60 until 100 over here this is not what we want because we want it to affect the whole displacer throughout the entire length of the spline okay, let's turn it back on so what we want it is the radius if we select this then now we can see that yeah this is more like it okay so what this means is that there is actually a little radius around the spline sorry i gotta turn this off again so we have a spline over here and what we are doing when we are saying this radius is that cinema 4d will calculate a little radius around the spline or the entire length of the spline and this radius is over here as you can see 10 cm and then this will be the one that will calculate the fall off and let us turn back on again so as you can see now it's at 10 cm if i have to increase yeah you can see that the radius around the spline has grown so basically as you can see this is what we are using and when we do our animation yeah pretty much it's just like that so this is our wave of course it's quite boring to just see a simple wave like this so we're going to just uh, add a little bit more of details first but before that let me just quickly show you a quick example on how a wave profile looks from the side we want to do a simple wave or ripple whichever okay you must you will see that by default when there is no um, wave the sea level is actually at this level as shown as, as this dotted line over here but as soon as there is a wave actually part of the wave or the water surface actually goes below the original height and then the next part it will go above the original height it actually dips a bit and then goes up and then it dips again we're just going to adjust the curve very simply so that we can achieve something like this and to do that we are going to go into the remapping over here so as you can see now this is the flat surface without any of the wave displacer and then all it does is just bumps up which is not what we want we want it to dip down a little bit and then it goes up and then it goes back down and we control that by using the remapping options over here and we want to adjust that using the curve okay so uh, let me just make some more space over here we now have this profile over here but this is not what we want so let me just adjust so the first thing is that we are going to bring it back to a neutral level at 0 0.5 which is 50 percent over here so our wave starts off at zero at uh, 50 percent sorry and then it goes up to 100 percent but before that we want it to dip down to maybe about 10 percent or even all the way to zero and then it goes up and then it goes down again so to do that we'll just go into our curve editor over here i think it's, i know it's a bit hard to see okay. so what i will do is i'll just add a point over here and this will be somewhere around here i want to bring it down first okay. as you can see i'll bring it down then i bring it back up over here so we got this nice little curve over here this will be our wave shape and it's a bit hard to see now because i think our spline is a little bit too low yeah, because remember that there is a radius around it and now our spline is a little bit too low so let me just bring it up so now you can see 
that there is a very distinct dip and then it goes up and then it goes back down again okay, and you can see also that we are we're not having enough uh, divisions and that's why i have this subdivision that will come in later to smooth it out as you can see in over here and also maybe make my wave oh, sorry where is it make my wave radius a little bit more yeah, as you can see over here so it's a bit more exaggerated okay so let's turn that turn off the subdivision because we will leave that on later when we're doing the final rendering okay so when we play back as you can see that's our wave that's simple so that's all we're going to do for the displacer actually we're going to just add the circle at the at the radius and then we'll just do a little bit of remapping to add the wave profile pretty much that's all and then the next thing we're going to do is just add the jiggle deformer because that's the one that will add the secondary movement later on so let me just add the jiggle sorry, jiggle and we'll place the jiggle deformer underneath the displacer because in cinema 4d the order of the deformers actually goes from top to bottom so what we want to do is we'll have the displacement first and then later on we'll have the jiggle to affect the displacer okay, and if I remember correctly, I think the default is fine as it is. So we can just play it back. Yeah, so you can see that there is a little jiggle going on around the wave. That's pretty much all. And then after that, finally, we turn on the subdivision surface. Of that. And there we go. We have our nice ripple. Uh, after this, what I've done is I've exported all my animations so i've baked this out as an alembic and brought over all my my objects into blender so i've already covered how to do the wave animation basically it's just simple using of a displacer and a jiggle deformer only and this is all we have done to create the wave okay so here we are in blender i have imported my scene so everything from the apple building to the platform over here and all the furniture and the, of course the water surface over here and I've just uh, organized everything over here for my final render and we're using EV render over here and the reason why I have chosen blender is because I wanted to use this EV render which is a real-time render and as you can see it's actually this is the final render is rendering in real time I didn't want to use redshift which is my usual choice of renderer as I've I didn't want to wait like for two to three hours just to render out the animation when EV can render the same exact animation in about three minutes, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I just want to show how I have created the texture for the water over here. So when I brought in the water surface from Cinema 4D, what I have done over there is just added the displacement, the, the water ripples and the jigger deformer and I've also added a few other smaller noises to add some more details into the water surface. Let me close all this down. So this is my water surface. As you can see that uh, without any uh, bum is actually very smooth so what I have done actually is just I've created a mask grave texture and I've just added a bit of uh, yeah, I just changed the scale and the displacement to match my scene okay. let me just show you what I've done over here so we're just adding that extra details onto the water surface because you know when the water is uh, moving it doesn't it, it doesn't remain so smooth it actually has all these small little fine ripples you can see over here so you can adjust these details as you can see and i think yeah i just went to a six because yeah if you if you make it too fine the renderer also doesn't really uh, display it properly and then i have a simple animation of the position of the tech, the noise so you can see this will help add movement into the surface when it's animating and the reason why I have two is because I want the noise to loop because after I was doing a looping animation so I want the start and the end to be exactly the same and I'm not sure if there's an easier way so what I've done is I have one noise going from 
I think zero to one meter in the Z axis, which is going upwards. And another that is going from minus one to zero. So that at the start, uh, sorry, at the end of the loop, they are actually both at zero. And then I just have a simple mix node over here, which will blend the two noises over time. And I've just added a keyframe over here so that, you know, at the start of the loop is, is, is at zero and the end of the loop is one. And then I just use that to plug in into the bump. And basically there we go. So when I play the animation, okay, you can't really tell over here because it's, it takes some time to render, but yeah. So at the start and the end of the loop, the noises match up accordingly. Yeah, so pretty much that's all I have done for this scene. It's not a very complex animation, but it's just something I thought I had fun along the way. Thank you everyone for tuning in and I'll see you all guys in the next video. Bye.